trying to put my mic Hello, Merry Christmas. Hope you had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for so many beautiful birthday messages that I got um, yesterday. Definitely feeling the love, shall we say. So, have you bought your stamp? We have um, the wonderful, oh, I do love it, the um, beautiful wish. So make a wish stamp today. Hi Roxy, hi Sandra, hi Katie Lou. Oh, I did have a lovely birthday. It was so wonderful. Do you know what? The only thing I did yesterday was have a lovely bath and put on clean pajamas. Best ever, it really was. It was lovely. Woke up, watched um, Never Ending Story, one of my favorite all time films. Of course I cried. Watched Call the Midwife <gasps> over Christmas, did you? Hiya Tracy, hi Helen, hope you're all right. Hello Carolyn. So did you watch Call the Midwife? Me and my little Lottie sobbed, properly sobbed. But I love it, I absolutely love Call the Midwife. I'm never um, behind on the series and uh, yeah, it was incredible. So I hope you're all doing really well. I've got my cup of coffee. I'm slightly addicted to like um, gingerbread lattes and stuff. It's so good, but I've got to get out of the habit, haven't I? No good, no good at all. I'm gonna end up with no teeth, <laughs> all this sugar. Oh, I'm so glad you all love Call the Midwife too. Honestly, Trixie is my favorite. Poor Trixie, she just can't get a break, can she? Oh, I do love it. And the doctor, oh, fabulous. Hiya, Helen, I hope you're all doing all right. Marion, oh, there's loads of you today. Uh, glad you had a great birthday. It's my daughter's favorite film ever. Oh, watched it, it's the best, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? Absolutely love the never ending story. Hiya, Helen, my craft sister. Thank you for my beautiful, incredible flowers that Helen sent me for Christmas. Absolutely. You watch Call the Midwife and never you did too, Katie Lou. Yeah, it's the best, wasn't it? That's the best thing about Christmas is the telly and the specials. I did enjoy Blankety Blank as well. Hi Claire, hope you're doing really well. Did you watch Blankety Blank? I loved it anyway when I was younger. So it's just, it was brilliant, wasn't it? With, um, oh, what's his name? Bradley, Bradley Walsh, is it? It was really, really good. Gingerbread lattes, me too, Sue. They're so yum. But I'm seriously addicted. I'm on about two a day. It's not good, is it? What am I going to do? They're going to stop selling them soon, aren't they? Because I think they're seasonal. <gasps> oh, I'm going to have to wean myself off. I'll wean myself down to one, then half a cup the next day. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay, right, so let's start. So have you all gone and got your fabulous £5 stamp? If you've never, ever purchased an Amala stamp, this is our opportunity, myself and Tony Derricks, to give you such a deal on a stamp it's unmissable because some people look at the stamp and they don't really know what they're doing with it and um, that's what all of this is about as well so i'm going to do two projects today i've been doing a little bit of clay work as well with this so get your air drying clay out as well just make sure you clean your stamp properly after and it will be fine it's fab isn't it but this first project i'm going to do now tony my beautiful craft sister tony Derek sent me an absolute incredible Christmas present. Can I just put it out there? She bought me a new pair of cowboy boots. <gasps> I know, I know. And you know, when you just look at me in the box, I just stroke them. I love them. I love them. So I can't wait to um, wear that as well. But also she sent me a box of brilliant products for my birthday, which is incredible. A lot of the lamination stencils, a lot of um, Pretty Penny stamps as well with the dies because I really want to start incorporating. Hi Jo, hope you're all right. Hi Angela, Marion, I hope everyone's really doing well. So yeah, she sent me a massive box of great stamps and stuff. So I'm incorporating some of that as well. Um, the stencil that I'm going to be using first of all before we begin is a thirsty brush stencil as well that I got in my brilliant kit. She's so generous. I know, isn't she? Beyond generous. She also bought my children the most exquisite Christmas presents I just oh can't even go there and guess what she bought Lottie for her birthday now my daughter's birthday she was 16 in um, August and we was due to go up 
to um, stamps by me, but she didn't come. My little lots didn't come with her, so she didn't get a birthday present. But Tony actually bought her a pair of cowboy boots too. So now she's just like mommy. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I must tell you, sorry, I keep digressing, don't I? But um, I must tell you about the most wonderful birthday card my daughter created for me. Absolutely fabulous. But the letter inside it, oh, it brought me to tears. Basically, she wrote a list of all things that make me, me. And um, yeah, blew me away. I do, the things that she knows. It's hilarious. Yes, I do like vinegar on my roast dinner. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do um, stroke my cat right up to the towel nine times for good luck. Um, random things, it's brilliant, but just loads of beautiful things that she just reminded me of things that do make me, which, which just blew me away. So anyway, enough of that. I can't believe it's gonna be New Year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 2021, 2021, it's coming. And Amala have got the most amazing things coming next year. We've got a whole 12 months planned. I can't be telling you, but I will be telling you, the next collection will be coming out in January, which is very exciting. Isn't that lovely, girls? I know. She blew me away, honestly. I was just like, oh, that's like, and the last one was, um, uh, oh, what was it? Fairy Godmother in Cowboy Boots. Yes, yes, apparently I'm really cool. Got excellent taste in music. I don't know how long this will last. She's 16, but I'm going with it. And I will bring it out every birthday, I think, just a reminder. I think so. Right, come on, let's get crafting because we're just nattering away today, aren't we? Um, so, like I said, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to be doing some stenciling using the Thirsty Brush Heart stencil sneaky peach you will get your sneaky peach you lot honestly you will do don't you worry brand new collection brand new collection of stamps and yes let me just tell you if you're an animal lover you're gonna like it um really fresh really modern really edgy just Oh, just the Marla encapsulated in beautiful stamps, isn't it? Right, okay. Hi, Deborah. Hope you're all doing all right. So let's let's get on with this. I'm going to turn you around now so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, you won't see how messy my kitchen is. But if you do, sorry about that because I'm in the kitchen today. There we go. Hopefully, we won't move. So I've taken my stencil. Now, look what I've done here. So I've got a piece of uh, watercolour cardstock on the bottom. I've taken this beautiful stencil. But what I'm going to do, because you know what it's like when you're inking and stuff, it's so easy to go off the edge. I'm just going to pop a slip of card just over this one because I don't actually want to use that piece. But I also don't want to accidentally use it as well so i'm just going to place it pretty central hopefully you can see there we go and i'm just going to place that heart in the middle now just using that piece of paper underneath just to mask off this area underneath makes no difference whatsoever so this is the beautiful uh, thirsty brush heart and also i've got some new colors oh there's nothing better than new colored inks so again Thank you, my craft sister Tony Derek, for sending me the pickled raspberry. Which, look at this. Oh, don't you just love a fresh ink pad? Oh, it's, honestly, it's a crafter's thing, isn't it? It's crazy, but fresh ink pads are just, now it's one of them things, isn't it? Do I use it? Do I buy another one to keep? No, let's use it. So I'm going to pick up some of this colour on my beautiful Stamps by Me blending brushes and I'm just going to take a little bit of that excess off just on the top. I'm going to come back in and I'm just going around that edge. I want all them little dots, all that detail in there. So I'm just going to carry on going round and remember pick up that ink that you've placed on that scrap piece of card and go back and use it. Now the only thing you do have to be careful is I have found the edge is very quite tight so just be aware of that or tape it off to make sure you don't excessively go off. So I'm just going to carry on going round, there we go, and it doesn't matter too much about the middle at the moment. So let's pop that on the other side and then I'm just going to take, actually no I'm not going to take the stencil off because now I'm going to be stamping, yes, so I have the beautiful 
make a wish stamp I love this now if you follow fashion if you follow uh, the art world at all you will know as well sorry about that even in sewing even in uh, fashion the moon and phases of the moon are really on trend for this year so this was sort of a, um, a heads up last year really on what was coming for this year so I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to stamp over my stencil now the reason why is because what I actually want is to use that stamp and stencil together in conjunction together to create something magical so again I've just transferred it you can use um, magnets if you want completely up to you so now I'm just going to pick up that glorious stamp now the thing with this stamp is it has got a lot of heavy black work so because of that I do suggest that you over ink it. I'm going to go for my Versafine, my Black Onyx, very simple, and go straight on to that stamp. Absolutely lush. Now, like I said earlier, we are going to do a little bit of clay work as well today. I've done all the prep, so hopefully in the stages I can show you how it works. So I'm just going over that stamp, really, really simple. I hope you haven't slipped away. There we go. Honestly, I don't know what's going on with this mount at the moment. It all of a sudden just goes on its own. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to apply fingertips over the top. Now, you, like I said before, because there is a lot of black work on this stamp, you may need to re-stamp over the top. But that is the beauty of the Eureka. There we go. We're getting there. Just gonna hold that down, bring that round. Add a bit more ink. Now don't worry, because I will wipe all that ink off my stencil after. So it'll be absolutely fine. So now we're gonna bring this down again. And remember them areas where it wasn't so crisp and clear. Just make sure you apply pressure, a little bit of extra pressure, a little bit of layer of that ink. Perfect. So now I'm just going to take this away. Just move my. Take this off. There we go. Now, can I find my cloth that I had just a minute ago? Yes, I can. So now I'm just going to clean that stencil just quickly. Just take that colour off before it sets because it is permanent ink. Um, if you do get any permanent ink, on your stencils and you can't get them off do you know what the best thing is to use alcohol wipes honestly it just pulls it all off there we go so let's come back to this now i just want to take this one off because i need to clean that in a second and i shall come back to do my ink work so this is my base card and obviously I've stamped through that stencil and now we're gonna carry on doing some more ink work. So again, I've still got that purple, well that pickled pink, shall we say. Oh, pickled raspberry, come on Carly, get it right. And I'm just gonna add a little tad more, not too much, just around the edge, just to pull that color out. Always tap off your excess, because otherwise you always end up with blotches. If you do get a blotch, just keep working that colour until it fades away. There we go. Also, don't do what I do, which is put your fingertips in. But I always end up doing it, and do you know what? Life's too short. Life is too short. So now we are going to go over and use some tumble glass. So wipe all that raspberry off. Pick up the tumble glass. And we're just using it quite sporadically. So just on edges, just a little bit to pull that colour around. There we go. Um, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna do a little bit of scattered straw again. Wipe your excess off. Never throw your excess. Now let me just move you over. This is my excess piece of paper. Can you see that here? Never throw that away because it's brilliant for die cutting. 
it really is if you just need that that little bit so now i'm just bringing in a tiny little tad of that scat straw not too heavy but just enough to give it a bit more dimension there we go and of course when do i ever do a project without using peacock feather let's get that peacock feather in there so again pick up a little bit of that beautiful oh, my ultimate favorite ink peacock feather and see how you can very easily just blend them colors through there we go just a little tad more just there balance it out lovely so then after that what I've done is I've already stamped and die cut some beautiful flowers now these flowers are from the uh, stamps by me website but also these are pretty penny so another brilliant range from stamps by me and it's just great because you get the coordinating dies and the stamps together so it's really really effective I'm just going to get a different brush this is a much finer soft brush I'm going to pick up that raspberry on there tap off my excess again onto my scrap and then I'm just gonna just lightly just add a bit more color onto these flowers now I watercolored these flowers before using my Hemi paints but if you just want to give it that little bit more brighter it's always it's a nice way to either use goosh or to use these beautiful oxides and it's up to you you can make them as vibrant as you like or you can make them really soft and subtle but I'm just pulling this color around the edge and away from that center there we go lovely so there's my flowers I'm just gonna place them to the side and we will come back I'm just gonna turn this over because it's got ink all over it now and we will start building up why are you so low today there we go is that better that's better isn't it so now I'm gonna take this and we are gonna start building up this project but before I start I'm gonna go on to my base card and I'm just going to um, use my tape runner to add this on there. Nice and simple, no frame. Because you've got all that colour work. You really don't need to add much of, um, of a frame on there. Now I'm going to start building this up using some 3D foam. And these adorable pretty penny stamps so if you're going over to the stamps by me website today to go and have a look at this stamp by um, Amala have a look see what else they've got they've got some corkers in there they really have so I'm just picking them up I've cut into these slightly you can emboss them from reverse if you prefer but I actually quite like using my fingers with these they just they just build so easily and that's what's really incredible about these very well thought out floral which is great so I'm just going to build that there then we're going to come in with a couple of the little leaves again just sculpt and just add and I've pre-painted these ones there we go so I'm also just going to pop a couple just up here I don't think I need them ones I always end up making extra and there we go so that is your first project my friends how are we doing you're loving this one are you so this is the first project using make a wish so stamp through apertures, stamp through stencils, use that beautiful imagery. And obviously you've got the boy and the girl on the swing, you've got the 
excuse me, the phases of the moon around the edges, but just add in that colour, isn't it lush? I will show you some close up pictures of this later, I'll post them on, so don't worry. So, shall we move on? Yes, let's move on. So, I was saying earlier, clay work. Have you ever done any clay work? So easy, get yourself some air drying clay. Um, there's loads of different brands out there, so thank you, thank you so much. Loads of brands out there. I use DAS a lot, it's really good. Um, it does what it says on the tin, you can buy it in value packs. So you love that girl's stand, but not use it. Yes, you need to use it. So, air drying clay, very, very simple. It takes probably 28 to 48 hours, sorry, I can't wait. If she knows, it's because I've got stuff on hand. Um, so it's a great, brilliant um, stamp to use with your air drying clay. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of clay, really, really simple, work it in your hands. If it's a bit cold, it won't um, go out as well. But this is a great way of encapsulating partial pieces of your stamp as well. So you don't need to use the whole stamp, you can just use bits which is brilliant so especially with this one so i'm going to turn you around now and you can see what i'm doing okay so here we go i've gone on to my um a different uh piece of acetate this time and obviously i'm still on my eureka because i use it as my platform it's just so good and i've got a piece of air drying clay and all i'm going to do is roll it out now, if you're doing the whole stamp, obviously you'll need a much bigger piece of clay. But if you just want partial pieces of the stamp, it works just as well. So now I'm gonna take my stamp, go straight down like that. Now you can push, but look, you can also just use that rolling pin to go over the top. Very easy. So just make sure that you get all of those areas that you want. I'm not using an acrylic block or anything. I'm just going straight in. So let's have a look how we have done. There we go. Now I don't know if you can see that. Let me lift that up a bit. You can see the clay and how easy it is to stamp into. So once you've done that, now usually I have my palette knife but I haven't got it on me. So you would take that away you would allow that to dry. It's that simple, okay? So once it's dry, it's like this, solid, hard. So now this is brilliant. This could be a topper, this could be a brooch, this could be a fascinator, this could be a piece of jewelry. There's so much you can do with this. Now, the colors that I've been choosing to use, I've got the Stamps by Me Copper. I've also been using a little bit of Pin Flare Buffet. I've got the brass, the pearl, and the antique silver. I've been starting off with the antique silver, even though it's quite goldy. Now, if they do dry up, just reactivate them with a bit of water. And I'm just gonna simply pick it up with a sea sponge. Now you'll see as well, rather than wiping, I'm pushing that color into the clay. These dry really quickly as well. Absolutely gorgeous. So you start off with layers and you just build it up. I mean, I'm gonna go on to the copper now. Now my sponge is quite wet, so I should be able to just pick that up. And then what happens is when you grab the darker color, it just grabs even more over the top and you can just make these beautiful styles of cards so there we go can you see that so already what i've done is i've done layers and i've allowed it to dry so this is where i am with this one absolutely beautiful complete stamped it's fabulous isn't it i love it so i'm going to use that um darker color now this brass and again i've just gone straight in making sure and then I'm just again going around that edge rotate it round now you can do this any color you wanted couldn't you this could be door hangings this could be a piece of um, folk art it could be so much absolutely 
beautiful. Now I'm grabbing that last colour and I'm just, can you see that, just pushing it in. Very easy and lovely. So I'll just move that out the way. And of course, the sentiment works an absolute dream as well. So you can add these to so many different things. It's fab, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just gonna dry this off quickly. Let me grab my, where I've just added that color. So then we just keep building up in layers again. I'm going back in to the brass. See how every time you add a layer, it just creates more shadows. So again, straight over. I love doing a bit of clay work. I just think it just looks cracking, really, really does. Now, again, you could carry on with that detail, building it up until you're completely happy with your color layering. But right now, I'm just gonna pop this to a side because we're gonna do some ink work on the base of the card. So this is gonna be my base. I'm gonna come over here, just grab my, uh, it's a bit dirty, that's all right. Place that on there. And I'm just gonna grab um, a couple of different stencils. Um, I found this one as well, Lamination, the vintage script. Let's have a little look at that, that's nice. Oh yeah, oh I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stencil the whole thing. It's not very often I use a whole stencil, but I'm liking this today. So I'm just gonna place a little bit of low tack tape or washi tape as you can see that I'm using. And I'm just gonna change my ink selection. So now we're gonna go into tea dye, a little bit of brushed corduroy, a um, little bit of, oh, that's brushed corduroy as well. I thought it was vintage photo. No, don't know where that's gone. Right, okay, so let me grab a ink pad. I'm gonna grab that tea dye to start off. Now again, tap off your excess and just go straight over. Dice. It's just beautiful, soft, not peach, not brown, not pink, but it works, doesn't it? It's a very lovely colour. So I'm just going to carry on adding that tea dye in. Go right to the edge there. There we go. I'm going to take that off now. Now I'm going to come back with a little bit of brush corduroy. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm not going to clean my brush. And now I'm just going to go on that edge. And it'll just take that stark little white edge off. So now I'm going to do some multiple layering inking. Got this one up here. So I'm going to go right in. I'm sure that is vintage photo, you know. Oh, no, it is brush corduroy. Grab that brush corduroy. I'm going to go right in quite dark with, again, the lamination stencil. Again, quite dark, opposing corners. Lovely, just like so. I'm also going to add these dots top here. There we go. It just fills the areas, makes it look interesting. The little spats. Beautiful. Right, I'm going to come in now with my wet fan brush. And I'm just going to go all the way round. Just 
couple of inks. There we go, so dry that off. doing that maybe it's because my um heat gun leads on the chair that the camera is attached to i'm just adding a little bit more heat just to dry up all of those wet puddles that we've got on there So now I'm going to take my brush corduroy again and I'm going to do my edges. So I'm just going to go around the edge, just freehand, just wiping those edges to create a frame. Nice and simple. Then we're going to take the edge and we're just going to pull it in a little. Can you see that? So you come in at the angle and then you just brush it across. great for that um, worn weathered wood that looks great with that technique so now I'm just gonna do a random little bit of tidying ink a little bit of blending there we go like so let's have a look is there any others that I want to add to this oh I'm sure there are yes so I've just grabbed another stencil oh no not that one Oh, where's it gone? I have so many stencils. I really should sort them all out. That would help, wouldn't it? That would help. Okay, so now I'm going to go for... Where's that one gone? Is it there? No, it's not there. I had it. Oh, you. Right, anyway... We're going to go with, I've got some circles here. Now, I do believe this is a Tim Holtz stencil. Not 100%, to be honest, but I think it is. And I'm just going to do down this one side. But this time, I'm going to pick up that tea dye, wipe across it, and then just come down that one side. Now, I'm not adding any more ink. I'm just using the ink that I have on my brush and using the same color tones will just work perfect so there we go lush so now i'm going to do a bit of matte and layering very very simple i've got beautiful look how zesty that orange card is it's absolutely gorgeous so i'm going to place this now i'm not using a tape runner because i'm putting clay on a card this time um, it needs to stick and it needs to stick good so sometimes tape runner wouldn't be able to hold that so this time I'm going to make sure my base is using Galago so Galago goes straight on there onto this beautiful it's almost copper isn't it coppery orange mirror card and I'll just stick that down like so See, now I could go on to the next layer with that, but that first layer will pull away at the weight of the clay. So again, oh dear, I must get by some more tape runners. Do I just place a little bit of Galago on there, that'll help. And that will go straight onto my eight by eight cardstock. I want that heavier print that side lovely and then we are going to come back 
to this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my card to a side for a second because remember that sponge that we use it's still a bit damp you can hear it, it's still a bit damp I'm going to pick up a little bit that brushed now watch just tap it round not too much but just enough to highlight that beautiful imagery and we're going to come in and we're just going to do a little tad just over the embossed parts there we go incredibly inky hands um, now I'm going to use my Galago tape on the reverse I'm just going to add three bits that should be sufficient and there we go I mean if I add anything of any sort of serious way I always use Galago tape because it's the strongest here we go or oh, red liner red liner works just as well so now I'm just gonna pop that in that area there and of course I've got my sentiment now I can either stamp my sentiment or I can use the clay mm, what shall I do I think what I'm gonna do now you know is I'm gonna grab a gray outliner and I'm just gonna follow some of this design on the outside and what this will do is it will just highlight them words because it's I don't actually want to make it look any deeper but I want to the shadows to come out more see and then we just go through and it's mainly just on the darker areas at the bottom that tend to need more shading and we'll bring that bit up beautiful so then you could make this into a brooch this could be a badge um, whatever you fancy isn't it it's endless so I'm going to use some foam pads now to use that sentiment on there here we go and if your foam pads are not sticking do you know what the best way to do is use your foam pads like this but then over the top place Galago because then you'll still get the lift but you've got the stick so now I'm just going to place that just off there there we go let's see how are we doing everyone extremely late I get it with gridlock my drawers are broken oh bless you don't worry don't worry Kirsty it's fine okay so using the clay to stamp with that background, isn't it beautiful? Think about the beautiful jewellery, brooches that you could use very simply with this magical stamp. Oh, I love the colour. You're definitely going to get some clay. Honestly, it's so much fun. And you can create brooches, fascinators, jewellery. Um, you know, also it just, oh, it just looks so yum on a card, doesn't it? It gives you that fabulous detail but still more 3D. It's brilliant, isn't it? Thank you so much, everyone. So the two projects I've created today using the beautiful Make-A-Wish stamp. First one, stamping through stencils. You know, you can make it bright, you can make it rainbow, you can make it soft, you can make it gentle. Absolutely beautiful. And again, I've just added in as well the Pretty Penny stamps and floral detail exactly the same stamp get some clay make something different and it is beautiful i mean you could have this as maybe like a hanging charm as well so then it's a gift and a card and don't forget everything that you create with amala you can sell so i will be posting uh, pictures of these beautiful cards well I suppose they are cards that i've created now my beautiful artisans 
thank you so much. I'm so incredibly proud and um, blown away by the uh, fabulous feedback we've had from Amala. It's been a tough year for everyone in the craft industry, but we've carried on inspiring and next year we have absolute oodles of brand new things to you. I hope you have an absolute wonderful new year. I don't even know if I'll make 12 o'clock. Don't know, probably be in pajamas, snoozing in front of the telly. But um, thank you again for all of your support, purchasing and of course endorsing our beautiful Amala. Um, and all I can left to say is have a wonderful new year, my friends. I will be back next week, next Wednesday with Amala Wednesday. Take care of yourself, my beautiful artisans, and I will see you soon. See you later, friends. Take care. Bye.